so for me, like I, every time I hear AI, I feel like Pee Wee Herman. Like it's like the special word. It's like ah, I start screaming. Yeah. So I today's word is <laughs> AI. <laughs> ah! <laughs> If you're under 30, you know, yeah. um, this is not new. It's what it is. It's, it, everything is changing. Nothing's changing if you're 22. This is what it is. Yeah. You know, I've, I've had an interesting arc in my career. So I had actually, I had a career before Facebook. I had a career yep. before the web. I had a career before TikTok, right? Same. And so, um, and I remember looking at people who were entrenched, who held the power in sort of, uh, um, in American, um, advertising and the number of people who were in power were not people who were in their were in their 20s right and so they looked at the, at uh, the web and the internet and digital technology as CB radio <laughs> like, <laughs> right? it was just gonna go right and um, and I think a, it's gonna sound strange but a lot of them were like they're looking at it and they ha they were three quarters of their way through their careers and they said I can ride this out, you right, know? Right. I don't need to upset myself. I like my routine. There's enough of the old kind of work for me to go for about another 10 years, and then I'm out. But didn't you feel like this is just another new technology? Because you looked at print and copy yeah. and the TV people. Oh, my God, that's not creative, right? They were like blasphemy. You guys were like, oh, my God, TVC, that's not creative. And now TVC is a standard, and I feel like yeah. there's another shift happening. And they're like, oh, that's not creative. And I'm like, yeah, it is. And I think Nick Law had a great talk, and he was saying when photography was first, you know, turning into film, they just kind of sat there, and they sat the camera, and someone, you know, it took on kind of more of what theater was, and it just captured it. Sure. And it didn't become creative until we made language for it, and you started zooming yeah. and panning and doing different things. And so I feel like we're creating a new language, and we've talked about this, and it's up to creatives to create that language, but first you have to recognize it as being creative. And I think I've always taken a pause when people are like, it's not creative. And I'm like, it always has been. And well, the other thing too, is that all of those people who haven't jumped and embraced AI, <laughs> like AI right now is the dumbest, easiest, yes. stupidest, ugliest, worst it's ever going to be. Period, full so stop. So this is it. Yeah. I mean, it's, we're looking at the Wright brothers, um, uh, airplane. Yes. And we're going to be at um, suborbital transcontinental uh, jets. Yes. In a, in a few years, moving so fast, and it's just another tool in your toolbox it's, on one side. On yeah. the other side, you've got to recognize that this is not just a tool that you create with; it it actually creates. With, with you, you. That, that's a different shit. that I, I think yes athlete actually like when you're looking at generative absolutely but I also think when you're looking at the information it can provide it's intimacy at, at scale and what I mean by that is all those ones and zeros and all the things that it's putting together is humanity it's our behaviors and us being able to tell a story that's meaningful that's human first is going to be an imperative and my push has always been where you're going from comms which is where we're talking at someone to a conversation. And those creatives who are used to having conversations with brands between people and brands, I think will have to, that left and right brain have to come together. Because up until now, I think the side of the, the left and right brains, it's been in service of advertising and not in partnership with. Yeah. And so that paradigm shift, and you talked a lot about the gatekeepers but that paradigm shift has to happen, but I don't know if the gatekeepers of old, of lore, of, you know, madmen are acknowledging the partnership that's necessary. Uh, ignore them. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing that's interesting to me is that there are people in their 20s who, unburdened from all the legacy and the history, they're just going, that's cool, let's go and make something else. Yeah. So I'm not looking to traditional advertising at all for inspiration. I'm looking on TikTok, I'm looking at other, all, all the stuff yeah. that people who are unburdened from legacy, I always find it's really interesting when you start hearing more established people saying, oh, that's shit, that's awful, <laughs> that's crap, that's where to go looking. Exactly. Because that's yeah. where people are inventing, that's where stuff is new, that's yeah. where people are breaking, um, you know, uh, finding new roads. Yeah. And so when, when, you, when you always hear people complaining and yelling, that's junk. That's, that's where the energy know. is. Yeah. 
yeah. that's where the action is, that's where the invention is. So I'm paying a lot and we're paying a lot of attention um, and doing a lot of work um, in, in that conversation. So question around that because I feel when we I always look at an iceberg in a certain way, like we look at that tip of the iceberg and we're like, oh, the outcomes look similar, but that 99 or 90% of that process is different. Yeah. The creative process is different. Like how, because I know how I'm looking at my teams yeah. as far as who's at the table now and creatively what that's starting to look like and it's different. Mm -hmm. um, and there's more of a tissue rejection I find around the process. Mm -hmm. If we keep doing the things the same way and expecting a different result, there's just, yeah. it doesn't make sense. And so when you're looking at the creative process, knowing that the idea is still center, Right, and I, I tell people we're going from storytelling to story living. Mm -hmm. How do you look at that creative process, but keeping that idea in center? Because I have thoughts, <laughs> well, and we've been doing it, but I'm also so curious of what we're doing like across the board. I, I don't, well, it depends on what you call an idea. <laughs> so there are kids yeah. who just decide to make something, they're, they're taking a walk, they're making dinner, yeah. they're hanging with their friends, and they just shoot something. Yeah. Is that an idea? I, not the way we would normally consider an idea, but it resonates and people like it and, and it's made quickly. So I don't think we should be worrying about what's the big idea. I think we should be making lots of things yes. and see what happens. And frankly, mm -hmm. those emerging uh, creators, people who are in their yes. 20s or, or, or even 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s, I don't care. But if you have an idea and you want to pursue it, don't, and you've got, I've got this. I think we should do it. P pursue it, run around them, go underneath yep. them, jump over them, and literally yep. just ignore them. If you have a thought and you're surrounded by people who are stuck in the mud, run around them. Oh, honey, I, trust me when I tell you, I go rogue every day. I'm here because I go rogue. I'm not saying be uh, reckless. <laughs> it's not reckless abandonment but, but by I, any means. I, I, yeah. I'm saying that you have we look at this way. If you have a marketing budget, you should have two things, right? Yep. You should have the campfire. Yep. Should be about, I think, 80% of what you do. Campfire keeps it, keeps yep. you warm, yep. keeps the monsters away at night, and keeps you fed. <laughs> All the things. Right? Yes. So that's the thing you constantly have to stoke. But about 20% should be fireworks. See what happens. Like, yes. um, try something, because yeah. you won't know unless you're experimenting. If you don't leave 20%, about for experimentation, right. for invention, then you won't know where the boundaries are. Fair, and I found a lot of success in finding small markets within large companies. Mm -hmm. So there's always different regions where you have people who have smaller budgets, but also smaller paths to success where they're like, there's less red tape, but you can also test in those markets and then you do it in that region and then ah, everyone's like, okay, that works. We can now scale it and make it bigger. And those kind of budgets and that kind of discussion is important, but it's also finding those niche places where you can just not be reckless by any means. Well, I would not, be, listen, move. I did not say be reckless. I definitely agree that we should be, because I don't want anyone being like, clean a sec, but what you, well, I, I, My 80-20 sort of rule is, 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 I not, love the is, is rule. not, um, is not reckless, but. No, no, but the 20 that, point, 20% of the go, innovation. And you have yes, to absolutely. And see what happens and you have to try it. Otherwise, particularly for large brands who by definition have got to be risk averse because there's a lot at stake. Well, we're also in cancel culture. Like well, we're in a place where- uh, Do the wrong thing. We do the wrong thing. The wrong and thing. so you're, you're seeing trouble, people you know? who don't want to be brave because mm -hmm. they're like, well, what had happened at this one place could happen to me and I get it. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think uh, bravery is warranted in a time mm -hmm. where we can dream with uncon unconstrained dreams. Mm -hmm. And it's such a beautiful time to be more creative, to push more. And I do think those who do that will get a lot further. You do have to experiment, but I think you have to experiment. So you said an interesting word, um, and I like it a lot. It's the idea that you're living a story. Yeah. And a b brand really is, we call it, it's a promise that's you know performed consistently over time. But more importantly, when everything is screaming and yelling, differentiation, Yes. And being unique is more important than other, or, or, never than other, than ever. These are new. <laughs> um, that um, you've got to find a w way to make sure it is. Brand is difference. Yes. All brand yes. is difference. Is why do I want this one over that? And it should be meaningful. 
Absolutely. difference. And so if you have a really good handle with you and your team on where the parameters of your brand can live sincerely, right? then in that space, you can do all sorts of incredible things. You, right. you, you, know, you can go deep, you can go high. Um, and so I think as long as you share a common understanding what the brand's biggest ambitions are and where, mm -hmm. in, in, and where you can you know, perform credibly, then within that space, I think you can do all sorts of things. Right. But you also have to move fast because it's all these a other agile brands that are willing to take risks oh, and, yes. and try all, 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 you know, all around you. So I understand the need for, for you know, uh, risk aversion on one side. The other side, we do need to have, find ways to well, create things that, are, that um, make you pay attention. Yes. Yeah, that are we, novel. There's so much noise. Well, there is. There's so much noise. Like, people don't know where to look anymore. Like, it's like, uh, wait, so wait, wait, this notification here. It's like people are being inundated that in order to break that noise, if you're not differentiated, it doesn't make sense. And it's so funny you said brand makes the promise because I usually say brand brand makes the promise and experience delivers that promise over time. Sure, of course. And I love that because yeah. I think so often we try to do two things separately. And I say, it's like a relationship where brand is the sexy pickup line where you're like, look at this, mm -hmm. and experience is the marriage. And right now mm -hmm. we're having one night stands and sexless marriages mm -hmm. because we have refused to put those two pieces together mm -hmm. in a meaningful way that resonate with people. But there are these smaller brands that are doing that quickly and, and making some noise in those areas. I'm so impressed by the jury. Yes. Is there discussion about, is this worthy? Yes. Is this worthwhile? Yes. That, it was cool they did it. It's not, was it worth doing? Yes. Because we talked a little bit about before. The only thing, you know, you can go and get another, you know, fabulous ne necklace. Thank I could you. go get, you know, another summer coat. What I can't get is more time. You can't get more time, and time is the currency, time for, is the any, currency. for any brand. And I feel yep. when we're having discussions around the role of technology, it's not to make it a commoditized. It's still emotional. Like, you never buy something you don't love. I do feel sometimes we use technology as a gimmick. And I remember when that oh, first I saw came some out. Gimmicks. Oh, there's some gimmicks in there because yeah. people are just like, I just need it to be AI or I need it to be this. And they're not understanding what that actually means and what that can bring. And people are losing the story. People are losing the emotion what I sense, or the function. What I sense in the room, because I didn't see a lot of, um, yeah. I saw, I've been in a lot of jury rooms. Yeah. And what I didn't see was like, ooh, awesome, ooh, cool, <laughs> ooh, not awesome, not cool. I mean, really important conversations. Yes. We have had so many discussions, and I know this is the first year we're doing presidents and having more discussion. It's been very cathartic. And some of the work that has really resonated in the room are things where it puts information together and tells you a human truth that you never realized. Um, and the beauty of what we're also seeing is the reaction to that human truth in real time. And so voila had a piece, and it wasn't entered that many times, but I found it very intriguing, where it responds, it aggregates food trends that are happening on TikTok, and then creates a menu and a delivery and a grocery list that you can order and it's responding to humanity at a scale at real time that I thought was fantastic. And it uses all the pieces and parts, but in service of a brand that is supposed to be delivering food and providing food, but reacting to a culture that wants nuanced options and wants things that are fun and differentiated. And so I thought it was beautiful in its simplicity because I always feel whenever we do, it's more like a duck on the top it should look very simple, but in the bottom, there's so many things working for that simplicity. There are two ways of looking at simplifying. Yeah. And one of my favorite Supreme Court justices of all time, Oliver Wendell Holmes. You have favorite Supreme Court justices? Not do you now. have like a list of Yeah, them? I do actually. Well, yeah, I have, you know, Ruth. And, <laughs> but Oliver Aren't Wendell you Holmes, you know, yep. um, it said, ever seek simplicity on the far side of complexity. Hmm. And so what I'm seeing for years is simplicity on the near side of complexity. It just, oh yeah, just do that. We've done that before, that works, that works. So what I'm looking for is mm -hmm. you've got to go through the work, do all your analysis as much as you, know, as much yes. as you can, so you arrive at a solution that's it's, it's informed by as much context, understanding as possible, so it gets to the other side. Roy Lichtenstein um, said, Lichtenstein. change it, change it, and change it again. Mm -hmm. So what you're looking at is, can we make it better? Can we make it better? Can we make yes. it better? I see simplifies the same ideal. 
is it as good as it can be? Is it, is it, good, is it mm -hmm. as good as it can be? And is it as good as it can be? So, well, here's what's interesting to me because I was in, in the, uh, with the uh, jury all day yeah. yesterday. Okay. So what I'm seeing on all of these cameras <laughs> um, is the jury is amazing. Yeah. And the jury is filled with people who have discussive intellects, have broad perspectives on everything, design, culture, yes. society, meaning. Yes. So I'm dazzled by the quality and the depth of the conversations that you guys are having, because we're getting what we talked about, postcards from the future. We're yes. looking over the horizon in this work. Yeah. And that is a sense of, you know, I think brands are mentors of things to come. Ah, I love that.